On the year of 1755, the Western world witnessed the birth of someone, who will head the greatest revolution in the fields of medicine and chemistry. Samuel Hahnemann was born on April 10, 1755, at Meissen, in Saxony, Germany. As the son of Gottfried Hahnemann and Johanna Christiana. His father was a porcelain painter and never intended for his son to be a physician. But the child Samuel was so bright that inspired his teacher to offer him complimentary lessons to advance his education. To this, his father could not object and allowed him to attend regular classes. At the age of 20, he left to study medicine in Leipzig. By then, he already spoke in eight languages, which included English, French, Italian, Latin, Greek, Hebrew and Arabic. After a period in Leipzig, where he earns his living by translating scientific works, he moves to the University of Vienna to further his studies. This is one of the most renowned schools of medicine in the Western world, and there he becomes the favorite student of Dr. Quarin, who is a very prominent physician at that time. After that, and still not graduated, he accepts the post of librarian and family physician to the governor of Transylvania at Hermannstadt. Thanks to this, he gets well acquainted with the malarial fevers of Lower Hungary. You can stop now, Casimiro. We have a drive. To... Easy, Casimiro. Easy. <laughs> After some time in this practice, he travels to Erlingen to complete his studies and graduates with honors. He is now 24 years old. Then he moves to a small place called Hetzstadt, then to Dessau, where he meets Harrietta Kutchler, the daughter of an apothecary. Afterwards, he became medical officer of health at Gommen, near Magdeburg, and there, he marries Harrietta and starts a family. But after a two-year stay, he moves to Polish Dresden, the home of learning and culture. In Dresden, his fame grows among the men of medicine and science, but so does his discontent with the medical system. And he begins to fall in despondency, which increases year after year, it seems that I am poisoning my patients with these drugs. But there must be a healing principle in medicine. Common sense tells us this. Then, in the year of 1789, Hahnemann moves his residency back to Leipzig and suddenly gives up the practice of medicine. Ah, these drugs are not working. Mm, what to do? What shall I do? I refuse to practice this medicine and I will find a better system. After giving up medicine, Hahnemann goes back to translate medical texts. This is hardly enough to make a living, hence he retires to a nearby village with his family. There in 1790, and while translating William Cullen's Macria Medica, he stumbles onto a fact expressed by the author, which seemed to contradict Hahnemann's own experience in reference to malaria and the properties of the Peruvian cinchona bark, which was then widely used to treat malarial disease. This was his Newton and the Apple moment. Oh dear, it seems I have found it. The next move is obviously to start a series of experiments. <laughs> Oh no, wait dear, not that kind of experiment. That would be a scary. Yes, indeed. After a number of experiments, repeated over and over again, he always arrived at the same results. He calls these experiments, provings, and these are the first clinical trials ever done in the world. Hence, Samuel Hahnemann is in truth, also the inventor of the so-called clinical trials. God has finally given to Western civilization a healing system based on natural law. He was then 35 years old. Yes, yes, yes. Eureka, Eureka. I found it, I have found 
the law of similar, the law of healing.